boys and girls, I'm Coach Ashley and I'd like to welcome you to my gymnastics studio. I am so excited that you are here with us today in my studio for Rev. In just a few minutes, you are going to meet some of my cheerleaders and they are going to help us discover some truths about the Bible. Have you ever wondered what the Bible is all about? Well, over the next four weeks, we are going to spend time reading from it and discover the answer to that question. I can't wait to discover this truth together. Before we hear more about the Bible and our story for today, stand up, let's worship together.
That was so good! And Sophie, I'm so glad to be back in the gym this season. Oh, me too, Will. I cannot believe that we're captains this time. You know, it's a lot of pressure to lead the team. It's going to be tough making decisions for the whole team. But if we work together, we can do it. Let's plan our routine for our next competition. That's a great idea. We should definitely start with a cheer that includes a clasp, and a high V. And then maybe we should move into some like tumbling portion so some of us can do round offs and others can do like back handsprings across the mat. Then I think we should close it out with a pyramid and whoever is on top can stand in a heel strut. Yes, that sounds awesome. What do you think is the most important thing for us to practice? Hmm, good question. You know, I think that the pyramid is the most important. It sure is. And if we don't get the foundation of the pyramid strong enough, the whole thing will fall. It doesn't really matter how great the top of the pyramid is if the base is crummy, right? Exactly. That reminds me about how the Bible is also a foundation that we must have to build our lives on. You know, I own a Bible, but I don't read it very much, though. It's really hard to understand. It often feels like a bunch of random stories to me. Yeah, some of the stories can be difficult to understand. It helps to study the stories in context of what the Bible is all about. You know, it's really one big story. Well, that leaves me with a big question. What is the Bible about? You know, that is a great question. And it just so happens to be our big picture question for the next few weeks. The Bible is the story of God's plan to save people through Jesus. Well, how does the Bible show us God's plan to save us through Jesus? You see, God created the whole universe. Everything we can and cannot see. Everything was perfect until Adam and Eve disobeyed God. Sin, sin spread through the whole world, messing everything up. But God had a plan to fix everything. At the right time, God sent his son, Jesus. Jesus lived a perfect life of obedience and died the death sinners deserve. When God raised Jesus on the third day, sin and death were defeated. That made a way for sinners to be saved by faith. I think our Bible story for today is about the early church. Where does the early church fit into all of this? Those who have faith in Jesus are united as a family by God's love. That family of God is the church. The early church were the first people to believe the gospel after Jesus went to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit to live inside of us. That leads us to our Bible story, the Jerusalem Council. Let's watch it now. Paul and Barnabas had been sharing the gospel with many people, including Gentiles. But some people in the church began to teach that the Gentiles could not be saved unless they first followed some of the same rules the Jews followed. Paul and Barnabas disagreed, and the church leaders decided to meet in Jerusalem to talk about whether or not the Gentiles needed to obey the law of Moses. After a long discussion, Peter stood up and said to the group, Brothers, God chose me to tell the good news to the Gentiles. They heard the good news and they believed. God accepted them and gave them the Holy Spirit just as he did for us. Why are you trying to make salvation harder for them? We know that we cannot obey God's laws perfectly. No, we believe that the Jews and Gentiles are saved in the same way by the grace of the Lord Jesus. Everyone in the group was quiet as Paul and Barnabas told them about all the things God had done through them when they were with the Gentiles. Then another apostle, James, spoke up. He pointed out that the words of the prophet showed that God wanted to save both Jews and Gentiles. I think we should not cause trouble for the Gentiles who have trusted in Jesus. Instead, let's write them a letter telling them the things they should not do. So the church leaders wrote a letter to the Gentile believers, explaining some things they should not do now that they were believers. The leaders chose Judas and Silas to go to Antioch and Paul and Barnabas to deliver the letter. 
The believers in Antioch were encouraged by the letter. Judas and Silas stayed away with them for a while, and then they went home. Paul and Barnabas stayed in Antioch, where they taught believers and told other people the good news about Jesus. The church leaders met in Jerusalem to answer a tough question. Can a person be saved by faith alone or something more needed? The early church agreed that because of Jesus' death and resurrection, he alone is all we need to be saved. What an interesting story. So some people in the church wanted the gentle ones to obey the rules and others said that they only needed faith in Jesus. Not gentle, Gentile. Gentiles are people who are not Jews. The Jews had laws given to them by God. When they disobeyed the laws, they offered sacrifices to be forgiven for their sin. But no one could ever keep all the rules perfectly. Oh, I think I get it. That's where Jesus' perfect life came in. No rules, just faith in Jesus' <laughs> life, death, and resurrection. But weren't God's rules still good to obey? It's not like God would give bad rules. True. The problem isn't the obeying the law is bad. Obeying the law isn't enough to save anyone. No one but Jesus could obey perfectly. Salvation comes only through faith in Jesus. The church leaders met in Jerusalem to answer a tough question. Can a person be saved by faith alone or is something more needed? The early church agreed that because of Jesus' death and resurrection, he alone is all we need to be saved. Yes, exactly. Isn't that amazing? Now we can put our faith in Jesus alone, and nothing else is needed to make ourselves right with God. Jesus did it all for us. Our obedience comes from our love of God. We obey because we are accepted, not to earn acceptance. And it seems like the Jews had a hard time letting go of the laws from the Old Testament. Yes, they did. Let's check in now with our cheer coach, who will help us understand how it is only through Jesus that we can have the burden of our sins lifted off of us and be saved. Hey there, boys and girls. I'm Coach Ashley, and I am so pumped to be with you today to help you understand more about the Bible and how it teaches us that salvation only comes through faith in Jesus. Today, I have a great demonstration that will help us see that there is nothing that we can do to help ease the burden of our sin. It is only through Jesus that we can be saved from our sins. I have two of my students that are going to be helping with the demonstration, Sophie and Will. Hey coach, thanks for asking us to help with the demo. Yes, we are always happy to help. So, what do you need us for? Uh, well, are you ready for this? I'm are ready. you pumped? Yes. I'm pumped. <laughs> In a minute, both of you are going to take a backpack and put it on. Okay. Sounds easy. Is that all? No. Then when you, then when I say go, I want you to start doing squats to see how many you can do in a minute while wearing the backpack. Um, that could be hard, but you know, I'll give it my best shot. Well, I can promise you this. When it comes to squats, I've got you beat. I'll probably do twice as many as you do. <laughs> okay. Now, Will, it's not wise to talk smack before a competition. Even when I know I'm going to win? Even then? <laughs> well, are you both ready for the challenge? Ready. ready. Okay. When I say go, I want both of you to grab a backpack in front of you and see how many squats you can do in one minute. On your mark, get set, go! Oh. And 
You won by more than 15 squats. Wow, I can't believe it. I don't know how I beat you. Me neither. My backpack was so heavy, I could barely do a squat. How did you do so many? Well, my backpack was super light. I could barely tell that I was even wearing one. Wait, what? Yeah. Yours only has a pillow in it. Mine is full of heavy books. No wonder you won. There's no way I could beat you because mine was so heavy. Coach, I think he's right. Obviously you knew about the different backpacks. How does this help us understand the point of today's lesson? Well, God has commands that he wants us believers to obey. But God knew that no one could obey them perfectly. The law wasn't given so people could earn salvation, but to show people that we need salvation. We can't try hard enough or obey well enough to earn it. So since I had the heavy backpack, I was like a believer weighed down by the burden of the law. It's like saying Jesus' death and resurrection wasn't enough. I have to obey to be saved too. Correct. And since I had the light backpack, I represented a believer being freed from the law. We can obey more easily without the burden. That's right. Obeying God doesn't earn us God's grace, but remembering what Jesus has done for us on the cross helps us want to show our love to him through our obedience. Because of what Jesus has done for us, he is the only way we can be saved from our sin. That's right! Our key passage comes from the book of Acts. Peter spoke these words while explaining the gospel. Will, will you read this verse from the Bible? Sure. Let's see. Acts 4.12. Acts 4.12. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. You know, that verse tells us clearly that the only way we can be saved is through Jesus. We can't earn our salvation by being good. It is only through Jesus and no one else. I couldn't have said it better myself. Let's go to God in prayer and thank him for saving us from our sin and ask him to help us remember that it's our faith in Jesus that saves us. Let's pray. God, thank you for sending Jesus to rescue us from our sin. Thank you for giving us a way to be made right with you through his death and resurrection. Help us to remember that our faith in Jesus is the only way for us to receive the free gift of salvation. Amen. Amen. Well, that's all for today. I want to thank all of you for being with us. Hey, be sure to come back next week so we can discover more about the Bible and see how it's one big story of God's plan to save people through Jesus. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.